Okay, good morning. I'm sure most of you are familiar with, uh, with MapQuest. Um, David Cole gave an uh, introductory presentation yesterday, uh, said a lot of the things, so I'm going to skip through most of the early slides. Um, so at last uh, month's State of the Map conference in Girona, we uh, launched and announced our mapquest.co.uk, uh, English um, mapping and routing based upon OSM data. And we, we aim to launch for Germany and France uh, shortly after some internationalization, localization of some of the languages um, is complete. Um, and as David Cole mentioned, we're using a lot of open source technology um, from the, uh, from the OSM community, Mapnik, Tilecache, nominate them for search. Um, however, we're still using our internal proprietary routing engine, and I'll go through some of the rationale for, for why we're doing that. Um, and some of the other uh, announcements of the, uh, of the fund and, and how we're trying to work with the OSM community and, and developers to improve, improve data and tools um, a lot of the focus is going to be on improving um, the data and its usability within the United States. And this is just um, from the uh, open site co.uk, um, which you know, is focused on Europe. However, if you pan the map over or if you do some, uh, some searches um, for areas in the U.S., you can actually run routes within the U.S. It's uh, something we're not really you know, out there, pop, you know, making it uh, an official announcement is kind of early stages in beta, but just wanted to show that uh, we are working towards, you know, developing routing and improving it in the U.S. And just a few, you know, you can't see much, but, uh, you know, just from Athens down to Atlanta, it works. It gets you, you know, kind of the, the route you'd expect to take. Some of the narrative uh, pieces um, need some improvement, and I'll go into some of that. So it'll say things like take the exit, where we'd like to say take exit 22, you know, towards Atlanta, things like that. So what, what have we done to date? Uh, we have essentially ingested the OSM data, using it within our routing engine, uh, focusing on Europe and moving into the United States. Um, Second thing we're doing, uh, which you know, was just completed last week, we're probably going to uh, blog about it and kind of publicize it a little bit, is that we're offering our routing services to developers. So we can, um, I'll go into a, the distinction of the, our open developer services versus our regular developer services. The, the idea here is this is all built upon the OSM data stack and, um, and also does not require the authentication and sign up that our that our uh, our other services uh, require because we don't have to report back in, you know to the to the uh, data vendors you know what the usage is and, and pay pay the licensing fees. Um, so where we are proceeding in the future is we want to identify routing issues, identify issues in the underlying data that um, that can we can work towards fixing and making the uh, routing solution um, a better solution. And at some point in the future, we hope to offer an open.mapquest.com site, You're basically a US-centered site um, built with the OSM data uh, underneath. So why are we using our internal routing engine um, obviously, we could use some open source routing technologies. Um, however, we chose to go the internal route primarily because of the, uh, uh, what we feel is the uh, performance and scalability that, that we provide with our, with our routing engine. Um, looked at uh, some, of our, some of our site usage. Um, we're we're uh, at peak, peak times. We're running 20,000 routes a minute. Uh, across 12 different routing hosts, something like 15 million routes a day. Um, 
and we we um, have basically done a lot of work through the through the, through the years to um, build that performance and scalability into our system. So just some uh, some of the underlying technologies um, we use an A star um, search uh, Dijkstra based algorithm, pretty standard. Um, we're doing what's called road filtering uh, based upon the uh, class or network level of the road. This is um, the idea that as you get further from your origin, you cut out searching certain classes of roads. So you start out in your community, you're you know, doing residential streets. Uh, pretty soon you, you move to where you're on arterial level roads. And a little bit further into your route, you know, you're taking state highways, then U.S. highways. And, you know, finally, you, you know, in the intermediate part of a long route, you're restricting your search to only account for interstates and U.S. highways. So the basic idea is if you're going from San Francisco to New York, when the, when the route is proceeding through Kansas, you're not taking any of the you know, little residential side streets into consideration. And that's, that's uh, you know, one of the, the key performance factors. The other thing we've done is we've tailored our our uh, routing data format. It's um, not a database, so to speak. It's more of a you know we we go from a database into a highly tuned and customized um, binary file layout, which allows us to optimize the memory and disk cache performance. The second reason we want to use our own routing engine is that we've built a lot of tools and services on top of it. I'll get into some of those in, in, the, in the coming slides. We've also um, launched and are promoting an um, iPhone-based turn-by-turn navigation um, product. And um, you know, if we are able to ingest open street map data into our routing engine, then you know, in the future we should be able to do a turn-by-turn -turn navigation against uh, open street map data. We also feel that um, our routing quality is um, due in part to some of the things we do within our routing engine. Um, the way we handle turn restrictions um, is important. Um, probably the biggest uh, impact to uh, perceived quality in, in my mind is how we do um, intersection or turn costs so that we can apply penalties um, to left-hand turns, for instance, uh, and based upon the, the uh, kind of the types of roads at an intersection, we can uh, ascertain, you know, kind of predict which paths are um, kind of the free flow and which you might have to stop and wait to, you know, make the, make the turn. And we also do some things with um, density of nodes and links um, to try to ascertain rural areas versus urban areas so we can kind of steer routes um, around heavy urban areas. So going from uh, Philadelphia to Boston, we uh, kind of favor a path that uh, goes a little west of New York City rather than straight through New York City. And kind of the final thing that we, um, we do is that we uh, have spent a lot of time Kind of tailoring our directions, our narrative presentation of those directions to um, create a concise, simple um, description of your of your route. And we've just recently added things like intersection counts, you know, take the third right onto such and such a road, um, prior maneuvers, so it's a, you know, turn right onto Main Street just after you pass, you know, First Avenue, things like that and uh, what we call gone too far guidance where um, if you miss a maneuver it'll, you know, it, it'll call, it might help you uh, identify that you've gone too far so it'll say turn right onto Main Street um, you've gone, you know, if you hit First, you know, Second Avenue you've gone too far. So we offer a set of developer services where you know, developers can write applications around our, you know, mapping and our routing and our and our search, uh, primarily focusing on routing. For this talk, um, we've just launched an open.mapquestapi.com direction service, 
which um, um, you can actually go to and um, see the kind of the um, it's a little tough, but it's um, you know a self-describing service. You can see how um, there are samples and descriptions of the uh, input and output formats. You basically you can construct the uh, URL with uh, key value pairs or JSON or XML and get back XML or JSON you know, for ingestion into your application. And um, so right now this service um, supports just a you know simple route A to B, A to B to C. Um, some of the other features that we support within our um, regular developer services which are built on commercial data uh, we do things like route matrix uh, which I'll discuss in the next slide Optim optimized routes you know if you have 15 20 locations it'll optimize the path to visit those locations um, some of the more um, advanced ones which we don't have within our open service yet uh, we have something called path from route where if you have a, a route and a set of locations, points of interest. Um, it can compute the time and distance from the route to those locations and give you the, the nearest point on, you know, the, the point of exit from the route to get there. So this is good for like trip planning uh, where you might want to see what restaurants or gas stations might uh, lie along your route. Um, time dependent routing, we've been doing a lot of work of, with um, um, allowing historical and real-time data um, to impact the route. Um, that's just built on our um, commercial data. Um, draggable routes, which we're working to integrate into the open map um, services. You can take your original route and then, you know, with the with the mouse, uh, drag it onto other roads and, and tune tune the route to to your uh, to your um, interests. And alternate routes is just the ability to suggest a couple of different options in your your path getting from A to B. And I mentioned route matrix. Um, we use this within some of our applications and offer it to, de to developers. Basically, you can get a, a list of locations up to, I think, 50. And um, it'll give you the time and distance from one location to all others or uh, time distance between each location and, and, and every other location. So. Uh, some atlases have some of this in the form of, uh, you know, the cities in your state down a, a column, you know, and across a row, and then it'll have times filled into that kind of two by two matrix. Um, so that's one application. Um, the other application that we use it for is it's the input into our optimized route. So to to do an optim optimized route traveling salesman type uh, pro uh, problem. Um, we start by computing the cost in time or distance from each location to every other location. Then we go through um, a heuristic algorithm um, called simulated annealing to find the near optimal path to visit each, each of those locations. And um, we use that heuristic because um, even if you know all the times and distances, if you have 15 locations that's uh, 130 billion possible combinations, and um, to, you know, computers are fast, but you know, not fast enough to go through and, and uh, you know, find the the true optimal using a brute force approach. So within our routing, uh, optimized routing, you know, we compute the two by two matrix of time or distance between each location, run it through this uh, simulated annealing method to find the path through to uh, touch each of those locations and we pump it back through our standard routing algorithm to produce you know the A to B to C to D um, route that optimizes the path and that's uh, um, pretty useful we have a site uh, corollary map quest site called route planner which um, you know some you know, small delivery companies uh, real estate um, you know some applications like that are using so how did we get um, 
the OSM data into our routing engine is what I'll focus on the next few slides. Uh, the basic path was we started from the from an extract of from the planet, uh, either you know with osmosis we um, tailored it to just a United United States or Europe. Uh, then we uh, took a program called OSM for routing, which is open source, and adapted that to bring in the route attributes that maybe that, that weren't in the uh, the original OSM for routing. Um, brought in some additional attributes, created a Postgres database from that, and then we um, went from that database into our internal format, which is called driving directions format. And that's a two-step process. One is what we call OSM to DDF, which um, you know creates the route network from the uh, route database, you know, optimizes it, tailors it, um, adds some performance uh, you know things that we do and then the second step is we post process that route network and apply things like turn costs once we form the route network then we can evaluate you know each link to link transition and apply a cost to that and by doing that in the data production time um, we don't have to do that uh, complex logic during runtime so this is pretty much just a little bit more detail. The OSM for route, we're bringing in, uh, we're primarily interested in the, uh, the edges or the, the ways, uh, the, you know, breaking that into um, edges or links within the route network. Um, once we're in that route DB, forming our network um, was pretty easy. Um, couple areas that we had to do some work um, is that we note a lot of um, kind of duplicate edges where multiple ways will um, go between two particular nodes and generally have similar or same attributes. Um, we haven't been as, uh, one, one thing we should do is um, try to identify them merge them in the uh, original XML and try to try to clean that up a little bit. Um, second thing we did is coming from uh, to, to kind of facilitate our narrative generation we did a little bit of, of standardization on some of the reference names so um, when we create narrative we look for na road name consistency and um, just in, in, in Europe we saw a little bit of inconsistency between some of the you know the the reference names where some would have spaces some would have dashes some would uh, have not have spaces and we'd kind of try to make them consistent we don't do that at the XML you know OSM level we do that only going into our into our data so our next steps um, what we want to do what we've done so far is um, pretty much do one-off extractions in creation of our data so we've not been uh, focused on ingesting changes to the uh, OSM data and creating a new routable data set um, that's our next focus so that when someone makes an edit um, adds their neighborhood for instance we'd like to um, be able to have that appear within our routing uh, solution um, we don't think we'll be able to get down to uh, you know, hour, minute, or 15 minute type intervals, but um, we should be able to get down to daily or twice daily, something like that. Um, we want to work with the community and identify issues in the routing, uh, routability of the OSM data, um, work with the community to develop and, and utilize data validation and correction tools, identify some of the issues, which I'll talk about a few that we found. Um, we'll probably uh, do a little bit of tuning to our data ingestion and, our, and perhaps our routing just so that we can optimize its use with OSM data. Um, hopefully we don't have to do too much of that, but um, there may be areas where um, due to the, you know, what's in the data, we might have to ascertain things like exit um, information. We might have to uh, make some changes so that we can kind of deduce that. Um, if you go to our UK site, you'll notice there's no pedestrian routing. We haven't, on our 
.com, MapQuest.com site, we haven't really done pedestrian routing either. But we realize that pedestrian routing is very important in, in Europe especially. Um, we're kind of waiting to um, make some enhancements to that. Um, I'll show you in the next slide what we've been able to do with our commercial data. And one of the last things we want to do, uh, well, one of the, another thing we want to do is um, we want to be able to associate real-time traffic information to the OSM data. So um, in, in U.S. and Europe, this is usually done through uh, what's called traffic message channel where um, vendors of traffic information can report using um, standardized codes. Uh, we'd like to be able to associate those TMCs to the OSM data in some manner. And that's an area where we haven't really given much thought yet, but it's you know on our radar. So with pedestrian routing, um, what we've done internally is we, you know, if you're giving a narrative direction of how to walk through a particular region, you know, pedestrian paths are usually unnamed. So what we've done is associated area landmarks with the actual path, so that as you you know, make a turn, you'll see the second one says turn left onto the walkway and then it'll say proceed through such and you know, Millennium Park or such and such a park. So we've kind of enhanced the narrative generation to, you know, while we don't have names for the pathways, we at least say some of the uh, areas that they, that they uh, go through. So what are some of the issues or areas where we see um, need for an improvement in the OSM data to kind of make the routing quality better. Um, since we just started working with the U.S. data, um, some of this is preliminary, but um, I'm tending to see a lot of driveways um, in certain areas, like near my house. It's uh, essentially Tiger data import. Um, and the, these driveways are you know, classified highway equals residential. Um, we'd like to see them classified as high, you know, what, what is recommended highway equals service with service type equal to you know, driveway or um, parking aisle, I think is what the two recommendations are. Because really we don't want to inject, we don't want to route on driveways. Even if you're um, given your last line of your directions, um, we don't want to say turn right onto you know, right now being a residential highway, you'd say turn right onto unnamed road, when really you just want to say, you know, arriving at destination, you know, hopefully, you know, destination on your right or left, if we can ascertain that. Can I ask a really quick question about that? What about um, private roads in like uh, uh, condo complexes, which are named, but they're really private driveways? Um, those would probably, we, that's a good question. We'd probably like to see them in there. Anytime there's a name where we can say turn on to such and such a named road, um, that's good to have in the actual narrative. Um, if they're private, we we recognize you know the private flag and um, we avoid routing through private areas. But if you have to use a private road to get to your destination, then we allow it. Second thing we're seeing is just. Um, old and abandoned roads, areas that uh, have not been cleaned up. Um, obviously, you know, I, I live in Port Deposit, Maryland, where there was a, a Naval Training Center, which closed, I think, 30 years ago. And, you know, it's all still nicely defined with roads and railroads. And uh, um, so, you know, in theory, you can route into there, even though um, with our algorithm, you can route into there. But, you know, there's no way you can get into there. The roads have been demolished, etc. I mentioned the duplicate edges and ways. Um, we'd like to um, be able to work, tw you know, we can, we can ingest and, and you know, kind of ignore them, but it'd be nice to clean up that, you know, some of that data. Um, incorrect one ways, uh, that, th I'll show you, you know, an example next. Um, as you can imagine, they, um, you make for impossible routing solutions and, you know, those are probably uh, one of the top priorities to fix. Exit information, um, as I mentioned, um, we'd like to be able to ascertain the exit number, the road onto which the uh, exit, um, 
uh, you know, connects, which I think we can ascertain that just from, you know, walking the path. But also, a lot of exit signs will say towards Atlanta, towards, you know, whatever. Um, so we'd like to have that in the data. And just um, looking at some of the wiki, um, I think it's modeled pretty well in Germany. Um, but um, trying to get that propagated and, and populated would, uh, would help. Um, relations and restrictions obviously uh, need, need attention. Um, you know, time-dependent relations, you know, maybe they aren't as important immediately, but in U.S., um, you know, there are a lot of conditions where you can't make a left turn at certain times of the day. And, and um, you know, getting those populated and, and such will, will be a, a time-consuming time process that hopefully the members of the community, if we can build tools that make that easier, um, will we'll, um, work on. Um, bad connectivity and disjoint network areas. Um, this is another big problem that um, if there are certain roads that don't connect, um, obviously you can't route in or out of that region. Um, I've seen you know areas crossing state lines, you know where the road is is broken, probably due to uh, the tiger input, probably. Um, so we have to uh, you know, find them, make the proper connections. Um, during doing uh, routing in UK, you know, we wanted to be able to route from uh, from uh, UK into uh, into France, for instance. And uh, what we noticed is that when we first did tried to do it, um, we couldn't do couldn't reliably do it uh, based on how we do our um, our road filtering. We had um, had highway equal service be a very low class road, you know, they're really meant for, you know, alleys, deliveries, et cetera. And, you know, we found that a lot of the connections to ferries used the highway equal service, which, you know, made them, you know, be filtered out. So um, it'd be nice, I don't know if there's, you know, a new tag or a different appropriate tag that uh, could, you know, connect the main roads onto the ferry, ferry paths. Um, Another thing we saw, um, some center cities, city centers in Europe have a lot of um, pedestrian-only access, and uh, we would see isolated, drivable service roads in that center area that didn't connect um, drivable-wise to any other, other road. So if we did a, a you know, city-to-city -city route, if that city center point was closest to that you know, drivable service road, you couldn't get in or out um, of that city, so we um, we um, did some internal fixes to those to those areas. And I put in surface tags. It's not a huge issue. It's just one of those areas that I kind of um, found found interesting. You know, the ability to add all these freeform tags of what the surfaces are. Really, all we're interested in is. Is it suitable for a car? Do you need a four-wheel drive, or can you know? Is it only you know for uh, walking and horses, etc.? But I'd see you know hundreds of different tag tag values. The one that kind of stood out to me was surface equals very horrible. A couple people you know <laughs> put in uh, their own comments, which uh, I mean that's nice, but uh, you know we don't want to have to parse every different combination. So just some examples. Um, of what we've seen in the U.S., you know, again, it's early stages. Um, this is another bad connectivity. It's not that there is no connectivity, but it's th that there is improper connectivity. So uh, this, again, is uh, northeast part of Maryland. You're driving on the interstate, and if your destination is you know, off on uh, one of these rural roads, instead of going to the exit ramp and you know, making the proper path, it just says, oh, turn off the interstate onto this road, which is an underpass, but, uh, so we have to, you know, again, I think there's some tools that we can probably look at the major uh, roads, you know, find locations where they connect to non-ramps, and then go through and say, okay, is this valid, is this valid, and kind of fix those. Um, incorrect one way, you know, obviously, um, if you're coming down, 
This is near Lancaster, Pennsylvania. If you're coming down this exit off US 222, coming around this ramp, it's all one way. You hit this particular you know, edge here, it's one way the opposite direction. And of course, your route is not going to succeed there. And um, so we have to, again, identify and fix these types of uh, you know, data input errors. And this one, um, Robert Chow at One Spatial, uh, we were talking with him and look, you know, looking at some stuff with him, and he pointed this one out. And I'll just kind of close with this one. And this is a beautiful map of a, of a ferry in near Vancouver. You know, up here you come in, you go through a little toll area, and then there's these nicely regimented lanes that you then, you know, form back to uh, enter onto the ferry. And uh, a beautiful map. Um, the issue with our routing engine is that we, you know, compact our data and kind of optimize it. We only allow 15 edges to touch up a particular node. Um, this one has 16, so unfortunately, you know, I have to, you know, come up with a fix for this. But unfortunately, the 15 that it chooses are these 15. The last one is the one exiting, and it just throws that away because it can't <laughs> add it. So, um, you know, we'll fix that one. But, uh, you know, I would just, you know, leave kind of the comment that sometimes there's a, a difference between what makes a good map and what makes uh, something that's good for routing. And, you know, we need to strike a balance there. So there's uh, my email and contact if anyone has any questions in the future, and I'll take questions now. Yes? How much have you documented in the wiki in terms of stuff that specifically would help you all and help our communities? Um, we have not really documented much yet. Um, we spent about two months ingesting the data, you know, creating the .uk site. Um, we're just starting to um, reach out you know, unless people in the community, you know, others in the community um, to, you know, kind of work on the tools and then as that happens we'll, you know, put back to the wiki as well. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out that there are, a lot of, there are already a lot of tools to fix some of those things, like the duplicate modes and mode mm -hmm. uh, classification settings that shouldn't, like, the minor roads hitting the freeways, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so there's the, the no name style on the front page of OpenStreetMap. If you sort of look for the duplicate nodes tool, um, there's even a leaderboard for the number of people, the best people that are removing duplicate nodes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess a, a lot of people are, are worried that there's some big corporate giant playing in our pool. And um, so, how will you be dealing with the community where you have like certain individuals that are, you know, that will be participating in, in forums and that kind of thing? I, I mean, we have just um, formed a team and internally um, to uh, kind of lead our open initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony Pegg, Ant Pegg, who um, some of you might have met in, in Girona, will be leading that. Um, there will be people on that team working with the community and um, you know, again, we have that email and uh, open dot map, you know, map quest, and we expect to you know participate in in forums and you know attend you know, events like this. Yeah. So, what's the line between what you fix after you get the planet file and fix it internally, and actually fix it? You know, in OSM? Um, we're still kind of you know encountering that. I mean, obviously. You know, one-way issues. You know that benefits the entire community. Um, things like the naming in you know a forty-five to a space forty-five. I don't think we want to contribute that back, just in case there are some local you know, reasons why it's spelled out that way. And um, well, I mean that's the kind of that's actually the kind of thing I'm just wondering about because I mean, the other renderers would benefit from that as well. That consistency. I mean, probably. What would be good is to, like you say, publish some of what we're finding, get a community, you know, get input from you know the community, and then if the consensus is, hey, yeah, we want to fix this, you know, then start doing it. But 
you know, some are obvious that, yeah, you know, fix it, and some are kind of questionable, and we'll try to, you know, get the community I mean, consensus. Sure, I'd sort of like to see an article coming from you all that would say, hey, in your community, we're really sensitive about term restrictions, and this here's a good way of knowing how to set up a time-based turning restriction, you know, which for some, it's a pain in the butt to figure all that stuff out. So yeah. You know, but if it's, a, if it's important to the routing engine, it would be nice to have an article that points to best practices, I guess. Okay, yeah. Like um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Um, I'll yeah. talk with Ant when, when he's back from vacation and... Uh, Right. You know. And I, I, while you were talking, I was checking, and it, it got the route from my house back to uh, to here, and then the route going back was slightly different. But I live on a one-way street, and the adjustment was made correctly. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah. <laughs> we get lucky. Or, I mean, not lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, no, I mean, I, I, I'm complimenting you, but I'm also complimenting the rest of yeah, the yeah. room because I mean, a lot of the stuff, the turn restrictions and stuff, and the one ways are are. In, in our map correctly. Yeah, yeah I, I was new to the OSM community two months ago, three months ago now, and when we first started, it's like, well, I don't know if we can route on this stuff, you know, and, you know, yeah, CloudMade does, and I, you know, it's like, but there's a lot of considerations, but I was, you know, pretty uh, pleasantly um, surprised or whatever that, you know, the, the classifications of the roads seem very good. I mean, that's one of the main things we use is, um, you, know, you know, speed if it's there, class, you know, highway tag if not. And, um, you know, it, it has a good hierarchy, at least right. in Europe. And, you know, so far it seems to be pretty good in the U.S. with the exception of, you know, the driveway thing and a couple others. I've helped out people in Maryland just that night, in 95 exit <laughs> guys. Well, I mean, I mean, we really concentrated hard in terms of making sure interstate routing, especially, is, yeah. is, is clean. I mean, I, I, Cecil County, Maryland, is pretty rural, and I, I don't think there's hardly anybody there who's editing. And but yeah, I ninety five. It's a big one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.